Go live. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We're just waiting for the live rooms to fill. Good evening, and thank you for attending from all around the world, all around Canada, all around Ontario, and all around Ottawa. This week, Justice McLean presided over a matter before him in the court regarding to many of the activities of the protesters. And he reaffirmed in his courtroom that we have a constitutional right to be here, to do this protest. We recognize there is a significant amount of pressure on city officials. Our issues are not with the city of Ottawa. Our issues are not with the city uh, residents. Our issues are with the federal government, in particular, the Liberal Party of Canada, who have formed a government. That is who our issues are with. We have a legal right to be here as Canadian citizens. We are exercising that legal right to do so. Given the pressures to the city, I have been working tirelessly, tireless, tireless, excuse me. I've been working very hard to work with the city officials to relieve some of the pressure on the city managers, the law enforcement and the residents themselves. We have shoveled snow, we have cleaned garbage. We have fed the homeless. We have helped out in medical emergencies. We have done everything within our power to support the people of Ottawa and to find a way to get our message across while still remaining relevant in putting pressure where pressure is due on the federal government. We have no interest in federal politics. We have one mission and that is to end the mandates and to stop this from happening again. We do not have any interest in meddling in internal, internal political uh, strife. We have no interest in meddling in the mechanisms of government. We just want to end the COVID-19 vaccine passports the masks, the mandates. We want the laws to be re, reaffirmed. Okay, we have worked tirelessly to communicate that goal. At some levels of government that doesn't seem to be penetrating. Okay, it's very frustrating. Two days ago, I did uh, an address very similar to this and I begged I begged for somebody from the city of Ottawa to sit at a table with me at noon two days ago it's now Wednesday night and I'm doing another address like this and I am doing everything in my power to work with the city of Ottawa to relieve the pressure on them but it would appear that that has not been very fruitful It would appear that certain members of the Ottawa Council are trying to use this Freedom Convoy 2022 to further their own careers and to continue to put pressure on law <coughs> enforcement to escalate use of force, not de-escalate it. We are a peaceful protest. We want to go home, but we are here for as long as the Canadian public wants us to be here. And how do we know that they want us here? Because they send us money, they send us food, they send us fuel, they send us their love, they send us letters, they send us their stories. They want us to be here. So we will be here for as long as the Canadian public wants us to be here. I invite 
the federal government to sit at a table and let's find a way to resolve this. I will not allow this to be derailed by <coughs> insignificant politicians at this local level who have aspirations of greatness. We are aware that there is a process center that has been set up in the city with fingerprinting equipment, camera equipment, and it's a facility meant to protest, uh, pr to process arrested truckers. We are prepared for this. If we are arrested, we will, we will be taken into custody peacefully. We will not resist. Okay. We have a team of pro bono lawyers here in Ottawa who have set up an entire clinic to help our drivers deal with all the nuisance tickets that we're getting, all the ridiculous nickel and dime issues that we've been dealing with in order to put pressure and annoyance onto the truckers. For those of you who are at home and you feel that this is much more than what it really appears to be, it is not. We are here for one thing and one thing only. And that is just to end the mandates. I know that the PMO's office has given instructions down to the city level to end this by Saturday. He does not want to end this through leadership, which is what people elected him to do. He doesn't want to end this through dialogue. He wants to end this by his old playbook that he's been using for the last two years, which is to talk about swastikas. Swastikas? Really? That's... That's the tactic. That's unacceptable. It's irresponsible. It's immoral. It's unethical for a sitting prime minister to talk about people that have a legal right to exercise their, their charter rights to protest. But he continues down this road. I will sit at a table with you, Mr. Prime Minister. I will talk to you. I will work out a deal with you that is amicable, amicable to everybody. I don't do that on my, on my own volition. I do that on behalf of the truckers. I will sit down right now, any place, any time with you. Let's solve this. Let's get at a table. People sent the members of parliament to Ottawa to represent, to lead. That's what we expect from you. That's not what we're getting. In, in, in exchange, what we're getting is the propensity to use tough talk and angle yourself, position yourself to a violent outcome. We are not going to give that. We will not be tricked into that. That is never going to happen. We are a peaceful convoy. It says... This has been going on for two years that they have gone through for the last two years. The, the way their lives have been destroyed, their incomes impacted, the jobs lost, the suicides, children that are six years old telling their families they want to die. That's ridiculous. Justice McLean has told you loud and clear. He has reaffirmed you loud and clear. We have a right to be here, a right to be heard, a right to protest. That is what we are here to do. We are prepared to be arrested peacefully. We have legal representation already prepared. We know that the Canadian Armed Forces are doing their staff checks right now. We know other police forces all across Ontario are being asked to get involved. We also know that retired members of the military, active members of the military, retired members of all levels of law enforcement, active 
members of law enforcement want no part of this. They think it's morally wrong. It's not what they signed up for. This is ridiculous that this late in the game, I have to be making statements to the government of Canada to get them to sit at a table. I do not anticipate in any way that the Canadian forces would come here with aggressive vehicles, aggressive stance. So I'd like to uh, put any of the discussion or rumor of that to rest now. I understand the Canadian Armed Forces. They will support law enforcement and they know that they cannot be seen to be taking over from law enforcement. That is part of their mandate. They will not. I understand that. I understand that they'll take on a supporting role. That's fine. We are not afraid of members of the Canadian Armed Forces coming here. This is a peaceful protest. We have no fear here. We are prepared. We're highly motivated because we can't go home. We cannot go home. We cannot abandon our families. We cannot abandon our communities. Everybody here in this convoy is here for their children. That's why we're here. And if you can't understand that, I'm sorry. Get somebody in a room with me who does. We are a peaceful protest. We want peace. We want the mandates to end. And last thing I will say, we want this to never happen again, ever. So it's not good enough just to say, I'm going to end the mandates, I'm going to end masks, this. Every premier right now is feeling the winds shift in one direction or another. And they're ending the mandates and people know that it's a bait and switch. The only way this truly actually does matter is that if we stop doing this and then we stop this, we set the, the conditions so this never happens to Canadians again. That's when we'll know that we can get back to just being the fun-loving Canadians that we are known for around the world. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the the food, the fuel, the, the financial support to the truckers. Thank you for the letters. Keep doing videos. Keep reaching out. Keep sending your love. Pray for us to be resolved. Pray for us to make good decisions. If there are any questions, I'll take those now. I just asked a question of... Um for those who have the time to and can travel, uh, would, are you encouraging them to come to Ottawa or are you not? It's my belief that the police will move tonight or sometime in the early morning and start uh, rounding up uh, peaceful protesters. Uh, should that happen, my concern truthfully is that it escalates the situation on the ground, making it more tense making it dangerous for everybody. And I want to be clear about something. We start off every meeting that we have with a prayer. And in every single meeting, we talk about safety and responsibility. Not just the safety of the truckers, but the safety of the law enforcement, of the citizens of Ottawa, everybody who is here. We constantly ensure that we can be as safe as possible. And we're trying to be responsible with every decision that we make. Our beef is not with the city of Ottawa. It's with the federal government in their mandates. And just to follow up to that, um, there's been a lot of people saying a lot of different things, a lot of accusations made about this Freedom Convoy not supporting democratic process or trying to ups, you know, mm -hmm. over, overroot government and things like that. What is the Freedom Convoy's opinion on that rhetoric? That's a great question, and I've been getting uh, I've, get, I've been getting a little bit of attacks on uh, social media over that question. Um, 
I, I understand the confusion. I understand that people would believe that there's some sort of an agenda here to overthrow the government of Canada. And I, I can't really comprehend where uh, that level of thinking comes from. There's never, ever been a discussion that I've been a part of, that I've been in a room, where we talk about any internal political situations. We just happen to be here during the, the uh, vote of non-confidence where the Conservative Party replaced their leader. We just happened to be in town when that happened. We had nothing to do with it. We have no interest in that kind of politics. We don't care who the government is, but the Liberal Party of Canada forms the government. We will talk to them. They are the legitimate government of Canada. That's who we would like to talk to. If that changes sometime in the future, then that new government is who we would like to talk to. We have no interest in the politics of, of Canada in that way. We just want to talk to the people that we should be talking to, and that is the Liberal Party of Canada. We want them to show some leadership. And a last question from me, and then we'll open it up. But what would your advice be to people that support this movement who have big followings online who perhaps are not privy to the information that truckers are giving on the ground in Ottawa, um, what kind of message uh, should they be focusing on getting out? This is peaceful, okay? We're, there seems to be this idea because of, of the dishonesty of mainstream media. They've been so disrespectful to Canadian viewers who pay their salaries and fund them. The mainstream media continues to, to go with the, the belief that if it bleeds, it leads. And they, they cherry pick all of the, the worst possible things and use that as, as the brush to paint the entire convoy with, okay? We're a, a, a convoy of peace. It's a peaceful protest. That's all we're about. We don't want to talk to the mainstream media because they're not fair. They're not balanced. They're too busy making the news as opposed to reporting what's tru truly going on here. They will have you think that this is an armed in you know, insurrection, which is ridiculous. You know what we have here? Bouncy castles. Bouncy castles in, in speeches and singing O Canada. That's what we have here. We have a lot of love and a lot of support. We don't have violence. So what I would say to people is, if, if there's talk of, of violence or misbehaving on the part of the, the, the truckers, that's categorically false and ir irresponsible to talk like that. And I would invite you, if you don't believe me, and in fact, I was on the street the other day and I said, and I met a couple on the street that said, we heard all this bad stuff about you guys. We just wanted to come down for you, down and see for ourselves. And they were shocked. They were shocked that it was so peaceful and full of love. Okay. It's like Canada Day here every weekend. That's what this is about. So that's what I'd like to, that's what I would say to people that want to support and know what's really going on. Thank you. Any more questions? I have one where they're saying we are an occupation at this point. What mm -hmm. would you say to somebody that thinks we're an occupation? <sighs> somebody who says that we're an occupation is not exercising their own ability to critically think. What they're doing is they're just parroting mainstream media talking points. They're not actually doing their own thinking. They're not actually reaching out and getting the, uh, the true story of what's here. And if you believe this is an occupation, then I strongly suggest you get on, get in a vehicle, on a plane, on a train, a boat, and you come to Ottawa and you see for yourself if this is an occupation. Then you decide. But be honest, be fair. And if you still believe that bouncy castles are an occupation, then I would... Say, fair is fair, you did your research, you came here and you looked for yourself, then you can go right ahead and post all you want on social media, it, which is your right to do so. But until you come here and see for, for yourself, 
Don't parrot the mainstream media narrative. You're being used to forward an agenda of hate and fear. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. This has been an EPGN Media update. Please tune in again for more. Thank you very much.